Welcome ladies and gentlemen and thank you very much for supporting my analysis and as you can realize we are trying to rebrand the show so we will be calling it The Bold Reveal and Review of course as time goes we are still working on it and uh, you can also give us your suggestions on how you really want it to be I want us to point out something very critical Rigeti Gashagwa has renewed his attacks on President Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. We all know that after Raila Odinga chose Martha Karua, Rigeti Gashagwa and Mount Kenya leaders were pushed to the corner because attack on Martha Karua was no longer tenable and was going to be detrimental to their campaigns as Kenya geared towards the general election. Official campaign period will be the 29th, that is today, uh, rather on Sunday, the 29th of May. And that is the gazette, uh, that is the gazette at time that IBC is given officially for campaigns to kick off. So if there is any other politician that is going to join the campaigns, then expect that from that announcement. But why do you think this is happening? There are two instances that we've captured it this week. When the Gedi Gishagwa went to Elgeo Marakwet and the Rift Valley, when he was attending economic conventions in both Elgeo Marakwet, Nandi, and Kericho, he actually came out to say that President Uhuru Kenyatta hated his deputy to an extent that all the areas that were supporting deputy president were not handed over development projects. In fact, what he was saying, that all the leaders, members of parliament, and the governors that were seen to be aligned towards deputy president, uh, their areas were not considered and were disenfranchised in Uhuru Kenyatta's government. Of all the campaign narratives that have been said, there was only one narrative that this narrative came from one that the president did not support or rather left out central Kenya. But as things go by, the narrative is being developed further by saying that President Uhuru Kenyatta um, did not support areas that were supporting deputy president. Now, if you look at that, uh, the two areas that were so much keen on um, the two where, where deputy president was getting a lot of support was the central Kenya and the Mount Kenya. Now, what Gadi is saying is that a president left out those two count those two uh, those two areas. True, um, and on that, the other narrative that came out where uh, President was uh, Rigadi Gashag was opening up a war with his deputy again, with, with with the president again, was on the issue of the port that the president moved the port operations from Mombasa to the dry port. Of Naivasha because it is in his own private land. Uh, these are all understandings out there and you can remember and if you look at it I think the strategist at deputy president um, campaign team have come out to then renew attack on President Huru Kenyatta. When uh, William Samui Ruto was at the coast he said that Raila Odinga cannot solve the coastal problems because he is going or rather he is getting support from people that benefit from the business of the coast. And was saying that he cannot lobby for the dry port, for the port operations to be moved from Naivasha to Mobasa. And by the way, if there is a narrative that I am not, it, it's, it needs a layman's understanding to really agree that even if operations, even if there is the, the, the port of Mombasa and the dry port in Naivasha, there is no way activity can be 90% or 70% in Naivasha and few or rather small percentage in, uh, uh, in, um, in Mombasa. The truth of the matter here is maybe the business has gone down because now of the two ports. 
but it, it, it is not really uh, true to say that because the port has been moved to Mombasa and there is a dry port in Naivasha, so there is no activity going on in Mombasa. Of course, the port is another a political conversation you need a whole day to discuss. So in this video, I wanted to find out, I want to uh, look at it critically. Why do you think President, why do you think Rigathi Gishagwa, Deputy President William Ruto, has opted then just to go and attack President Uhuru Kenyatta? Because if you can ask Kenyans, we'll remind you that the person who is on ballot is Raila Odinga and Martha Karua, then William Ruto and Rigathi Gishagwa. They have opted to leave Raila and Martha Karua and because Martha Karua is untouchable, she seems to be a very clean uh, woman who, if you touch, then yourself, you're going to just go away <laughs> with, your own, uh, 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 with your own issues. Why do you think that is happening? Ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this video and you have not yet subscribed to our channel, I want to humbly request you to subscribe, click the notification bell, and also give us your feedback on what, why you think this team has opted in that direction. The Kenya Kwanzaa campaigns as time go by is lacking the emotional appeal. The emotional appeal is what will create a euphoria on their candidature. Now, this emotional appeal is lacking because of two things. One, the attack on president was polarizing the country and charging the audience or rather charging the voters both who support both both those who support Uhuru and also those who support Dr William Samoei Ruto without with, with with the fact that now the politics the race is shaping to a Ruto Raila uh, the Ruto team are lacking a tangible narrative that they can use to wipe the emotions of voters. While on the other end, Raila Odinga is getting emotional and ideological appeal on the presence of, or rather on the emergence of Mata Karua. So there are people, and if you looked at, uh, I think I was reading The Nation, I, I shared that newspaper here, they mentioned that Mata Karua has now identified and has developed a niche on her candidature on young women women groups and the gender card is now wiping emotions in that direction now this is lacking because they have realized that just going to attack Raila Dinga saying Raila Dinga did what in government Raila Dinga cannot do this Raila Dinga is age that is no longer a very special appeal now that cannot inject new energy because that has been said for the last four years and if you like you can say for the last 10 years <laughs> so they have to find another way and a sustained attack on president Uhuru Kenyatta for them to wipe the appeal uh, to wipe the emotional appeal let me just uh, look at this pointer when do you think Rigedi Geshagwa was sent to Rift Valley? He was sent to Rift Valley to wipe this appeal. And it ties on this number two. The Kenya Kwanzaa supporters, I think with the time they had become dormant. Uh, there was fatigue that was trying to sink, that was sinking in, that probably they are not going to lose the, pre they are not going to win the presidency. They see a lot of support in Azimio and President Huru Kenyatta's backroom support in Azimio. And there is a likelihood that the, we are going to election, but the fifth president is likely to come from Azimio La Umoja. Now, what is happening? This narrative on attacking Uhuru is, is, is just there to build the acrimony so that this acrimony can energize Ruto's bases. And the Ruto's bases are a few youths between age between 18 to 24 from, uh, from Central Kenya and a host of another leaders, uh, another group of youths from the counties of Kericho, Bomet, um, uh, Wasingishu, Nandi. Let's not even say uh, Kalenjin, because the other day I was discussing with a very good friend, Kiprotich, 
and he made me understand that in 2013 and 2017 William Ruto's vote the votes that William Ruto brought on board were not more than 2.5 million because his counties the Kalenjin counties is only Bomet, Kericho, Wasingishu and Nandi. West Pokot, Samburu, Narok, Kajado, Turkana, it's a different story and it can either go it can go either side. So the dormancy that was sinking in, people are feeling like you know with with the presence of now leaders, the reality is dawning that people are now taking positions, Davad is taking chief minister, so and so is taking speaker of the senate and all that is happening. Uh, UDA nominations also deflected the euphoria. There was a feeling and that is why they are attacking, they are now renewing the attack on President Uhuru Kenyatta to again continue branding Deputy President William Ruto as a victim of betrayal. But it would also be um, um, a strategy to polarize the ground, preparing or rather trying to preempt President Uhuru Kenyatta's plan to hit the ground. Um, Two weeks ago, the Star and uh, I think it was the Star and the Nation read two headlines that President was not going to join the campaigns. And the next day, the UDA team, Regete Geshakwa, was in Muranga saying that President has made a very good decision not to join the campaigns and now they are going to look for Raila one on one. It's an understatement anyway. But then, after that, Kanini Kega would then have another exclusive interview in nation and say that the president is going to play an active role in the campaigns. Now what is happening, William Bruto's strategists are in between a hard place and a rock, between a rock and a hard place. Is it between a tree and a hard a rock, something? Eh? They're in some sort of a corner. They don't know is president, is president going to campaign or not. Now what they're trying to do, they're already trying to create um, a negative perception about the president. So that in any case, Uhuru will try to go and campaign for Raila Odinga in central Kenya or any other part of the country, he, they are already going to say that those areas did not benefit from his government. And that is what they are trying to do to create that strategy. So that that perception, to make that strategy, so that that perception comes out that whoever, whatever president is going to say, no one should listen to him. Lastly, I think Regedi Geshagwa and William Ruto, or rather the Kenya Kwanzaa presidential team, are just out to make sure that they discredit Jubilee track record. And for some time, this, this election was going to be very different a bit, because Raila Odinga, who seemingly by optics is out of government, but is very friendly with the government. William Ruto wants to mount his presidential uh, campaigns on what the Jubilee government did not achieve in the second term because he was kind of the truth of the matter, he was distanced from the government, but at the same time he's a sitting deputy president, principal assistant to President Uhuru Kenyatta. So he's also finding it very difficult. What they have tried to do is now in the next two months, uh, there is nothing much, it's about the campaigns and it's about everything. They have been coming out of the manifesto. And what they're now doing, they're now drawing the line, saying, look here, let Sahila be on the government side and us, we are going 140%. Or we are making a 360 degrees approach, a 360 degree approach on discrediting President Uhuru Kenyatta's achievement so that they don't carry the Jubilee baggage. Because as things stand now, I was in supermarket, I think the other day, trying to do some uh, shopping, and I realized that eh, Ungangano was 194 from 150, I think last month. And I was asking someone, an, an increase of 44 shillings in 2 kg, honestly. This is, these are things that Kenyans will look and will think, okay, are we really fine? So that is why they've already seen the, you, you see the, the finance bill that got stuck in the National Assembly that was rejected in the National Assembly, they have realized that tough times are coming ahead. And what they need to do is to make sure Kenyans are a bit tired of the government and life is unbearable. So they want to draw that line. However, <laughs> interestingly enough, Regedi Geshagwa is a sitting member of parliament. Deputy President William Ruto 
is an elected member who is in government. Now Raila and Martha Karua are nowhere in that pecking order. Ladies and gentlemen, when do you think they are going after Uhuru Migai Kenyatta? Let's have a very constructive uh, uh, debate in the comment section. Eh? And also, it's called, by the way, it's called the bold. Eh? Yeah, so what we're simply saying, we are going bold. Reveal and reveal. And we try to make it research-based. Kindly subscribe to my channel.